I discovered what my superpowers were at an early age. Superpowers are these qualities that make up our personality, or they may be skills that we learn and master. For me, I had an ability to convince everyone that my idea and suggestion was valid, and people would listen and be persuaded. This worked well for me at the age of eight, on the playgrounds. I would convince everyone that I had this protective shield around me that would prevent me from losing at a game called It. Where the goal of It was to run and make it over to that safe zone by the trees, but if you were too slow, you were tagged It and you were out of the game. Well, I would get caught and tag It on occasion, and I would use my superpowers to convince my friends and playmates to let me stay in the game because of the protective shield that they couldn't even see. And this worked. Later in life, as an adult, I'd go on to serve on committees, nonprofit boards, work in business development, and work as an attorney in many settings. People often look to me as a source of information on how to handle a problem with a project, even when I'm not the committee chair or the project manager. People often listen to me when I'm advocating for change, whether I'm in a courtroom, a boardroom, or a state house. And they'll take certain actions that I suggest because I've demonstrated to them that I'm knowledgeable and credible. Now, I'm not the only one that possesses these superpowers. Many people have these abilities. And throughout my life, I've strengthened and further developed them. And they've served me so well in many different settings. But let's be clear. The kryptonite for these superpowers was and continues to be my parents who I have not been able to convince of much of anything. I certainly haven't been able to convince them to stop calling me by my childhood nickname, no matter how many degrees I have or awards I've achieved. To them, I'm still Nikki, and Nikki needs to take out the trash among other chores and tasks when I go home to visit them in Chicago, no question. But on everybody else, these superpowers work. And I realize that I have several superpowers, but four in particular I want to talk about are, one, the ability to communicate ideas and information clearly. Two, the ability to influence others to act. Three, the ability to be viewed as a credible source. And four, the ability to be self-aware. These four superpowers are among a list of qualities and skills that I have used and observed over the years that make me what I like to refer to as a persuasive authority. And to be a persuasive authority in any setting. These four qualities and skills are also particularly important when you want to advocate for change. Whether that's a social change in your community, a policy change in your local school, or an organizational change in your workplace. You need to be the persuasive authority. I want you to take a moment. Think about someone who you see as a leader. Get an image of that person in your head. It is likely the person you have imagined is someone who's a great communicator. And I bet that they are highly influential. I would also beg to offer that they are someone who seems to be knowledgeable and informed. And they probably are someone who acknowledges that they don't have all the answers. Now, how many of you saw yourself in that image of a leader? Uh-huh. Not many people think of themselves as a leader. A University of Michigan study found that only 16% of graduate level business students wrote down the word leader when asked to write words to describe themselves. That same study found that people who identified as women felt less comfortable identifying as a leader. Many people hear that term leader and they instantly associate it with someone who has a formal leadership title, 
the manager, the director, chair, president, CEO. I don't. I instead think of the persuasive authority. I think of that person who exhibits those four superpowers. They're a great communicator, they're influential, credible and self-aware, and they typically do not hold any formal leadership title. Now, the persuasive authority is in fact a leader. The persuasive authority is the person who leads from where they are. No title is needed to lead from where you are. Because we know titles don't make leaders, actions do. Real change can happen in communities, institutions, organizations, when we recognize and accept that people can lead from where they are. Now persuasive authority, it's a legal term, because I know there's lawyers in the room listening to me like, what is she talking about? Persuasive authority is a legal term I learned in law school that in a simple definition refers to very compelling, very convincing legal cases, law journal articles or other sources that a court can look to and view as credible. But the court isn't obligated to follow what's in that credible source. However, courts are often very much so persuaded, influenced, by that very compelling, very convincing, credible source. I think everyday people can be persuasive authorities and have the ability to lead from where they are. Even if they don't think of themselves as a leader, wouldn't write down the word leader when asked to write words to describe themselves, and even if they feel uncomfortable identifying as a leader. Here's how. It's gonna take some practice. Yes, we're talking about practice. Being a great communicator and being influential. Communication is one of the most important leadership skills, whether you're writing or speaking or using those unspoken cues to convey information. Great communication motivates people. When we start motivating people, we're demonstrating that ability to be influential. Influence. Well, that's how we get commitment from others. It is how we get things accomplished because we can't go it alone. Growing up on the south side of Chicago, I remember there was a woman in my community who I'm going to call Ms. Gibbons. Ms. Gibbons was that woman in the neighborhood who knew everything. Do you know people like this? She was the woman who knew where all the potholes were. She knew exactly who to call at what city agency to get those potholes fixed. She knew all of the elected officials in the district. She even knew the people who were planning to run for office. Ms. Gibbons was the first person who actually expressed to me this idea about civic engagement. She said, it is how we are able to advocate for change in our communities. And that your vote is your voice to express your issues, needs, and concerns to those people we've elected to represent us. Ms. Gibbons was also that woman who knew how many times you and your friends were out past curfew, and she might tell your mama, because Ms. Gibbons was well informed. Ms. Gibbons was the nosy lady in the neighborhood. Let's just be clear, she was nosy. And she was a good leader. She had this ability to communicate ideas and information clearly. Now, I don't think she would ever call herself a leader. I'm pretty sure no one in our community would refer to her that way. But her ability to communicate ideas and information clearly was evident. She advised our parents and community members on all these upcoming obscure elections that people didn't even know were happening. She was influential. People listened to Ms. Givens, they considered her to be a credible source of information, and they acted upon her instructions, basically. She was that persuasive authority. She led from where she was. Now, how do you go about strengthening your ability to be a great communicator and being influential? Well, it's not just relying on your social media account. We're not doing this for the gram. You have to practice keeping your message simple and strong. 
You have to connect with people in real life and actively listen to them. The truth is people want to do things for people they like, they want to work with people they like, and people who encourage them. When you practice and strengthen these skills, you'll be able to drive change in your community or a C-suite. Now you also have to be credible and be self-aware. Credibility is that quality that we have that makes people believe and trust us. It is when they think we're well-informed and knowledgeable, whether that's true or untrue. And self-awareness, it includes many things. It includes understanding your skills and abilities or lack thereof. Understanding how others perceive you and your actions. When I worked as a public interest attorney, I represented hundreds of clients in courtrooms. I would go to city hall and testify on their behalf. I'd go to the state capitol and advocate for them and their rights. I learned very quickly that it is the people closest to the issue, people like my clients, who are some of the best strategists and advocates. They, in fact, made me a better legal advocate. They understood from a grassroots level why certain issues existed in their communities and even the root causes of them. Now, they would look to me as the one who was the leader. I had the title. I was the attorney. And they thought that I was the knowledgeable and credible one in the room. While that might have been true, I realized I didn't have all the answers. I oftentimes had to look to them and value my clients, their experience, their knowledge about the issue. And many times that required me to take a step back, to listen, observe, and reflect before stepping in to help. When I did this, I built even more credibility and trust with my clients and my attorney peers. Being viewed as a credible source and being self-aware would go on to help me in many organizational settings. In one workplace, I was able to advocate for changes to a strategic planning initiative. In another workplace, I advocated for changes to hiring practices. I wasn't the leader. I didn't have any leadership title. I was a mid-level manager. Sometimes I was just a member of the team. I continue to be that persuasive authority in my current volunteer life and workplace. How do you establish your credibility and enhance your self-awareness? Well, when it comes to credibility, you have to be informed. You gotta be like Ms. Givens. In your workplace, what that looks like is knowing your industry, staying on top of what's happening. In your community, that could look like you knowing who those elected officials are. What are they doing? What aren't they doing? Or it could mean finally going to that community meeting and getting an understanding of the issues that your neighbors are struggling with. You can enhance your self-awareness by taking an assessment of your strengths and weaknesses and acknowledging them. You can also enhance your self-awareness by getting feedback from others. And guess what? You have to listen to it. When we understand other viewpoints and perspectives on issues, we can take more meaningful, more thoughtful action. Those four superpowers, being a great communicator, being influential, being credible, being self-aware, guess what? They can be learned, developed, and strengthened over time. Leadership, it is a verb, it is an action. Effective advocacy for change requires good leaders. And guess what, you can be the persuasive authority and lead from where you are every day. No title is necessary. Remember that image of a leader you had in your head earlier? Can you see yourself now in that image? Do you feel comfortable leading from where you are? I hope you do, because every day, people can lead. Thank you.